Now we're going to look some more at fractional exponents. Um, and this video doesn't have too much that's new, but I really want you to take this as an opportunity to, to do a lot of practice, right? Because I think it can be tricky, and I, I want you to you know, really, really pause every time I ask you to pause so that you can get the, the practice in here. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about is I really want you to be good at going back and forth between the two different notations. Right, so the first couple ones I'm going to have you practice is if I, if I give it to you in radical notation, I want you to change it into um, notation with a fractional exponent. And if I give it to you in um, notation with a fractional exponent, I want you to change it back to radical form. Right, so let me do these, these two here. Right, so let's think about what this means. This is the same thing as saying x to the fifth, right, that whole thing, raised to the one-third power. Right? And then we can apply the property of this property, right? x squared to the fourth power, we know that's x to the eighth. Right? So we can multiply exponents. So here, x to the fifth raised to the one-third, that's the same thing as x to the five-thirds. Let me write that better. Right? Because we could just multiply five times one-third, which is five-thirds. Okay? Alright, this one, let's uh, rewrite this using um, radicals. All right, so you need to remember this is the same thing as saying um, x to the one-third squared, right? Because um, one-third times two is two-thirds, right? And then if we were to write this with a radical, this is the same thing as saying the cube root of x squared. All right, I want you to pause and do these three, all right? So the first two have radicals. I want you to rewrite those using fractional exponents. The third one has a fractional exponent. I want you to rewrite that using radicals. Pause, please, and do those. All right, here are the answers. So the first one, you should have, um, this is the same thing as x to the seventh raised to the one-fourth power, which is the same thing as x to the seven-fourth. The fourth, uh, number four, this is the same thing as saying x to the one-half power cubed, which is the same thing as x to the three-halves. Okay, and again, that's applying the property. This is the really important property you got to know. x squared to the fourth, right, that's the same thing as x to the eighth, right? The exponents would multiply there, right? One-half times three is three-halves. Okay, and five, uh, let's see, how could we rewrite this one, right? There, there's a couple ways you could do this. You could think of this as x to the one-sixth, let me re sorry, erase that, x to the one-sixth to the fifth power, which is the same thing as the sixth root of x raised to the fifth, right? Or, some of you may have done it this way. You may have said this is the same thing as x to the fifth, that whole thing to the one-sixth, right? Which is the same thing as the sixth root of x to the fifth. Okay, so I just want you to realize there's two ways to write this answer. You could write it this way, or you could write it this way. All right, so now we're going to apply that same property that we've been working with, right? So the property, again, was this, that x squared raised to the fourth power, we know that's the same thing as x to the eighth, right? And so all we're going to do is just apply that property to these problems, okay? So uh, let me do the first one. First one, real simple, I've got x to the two-thirds raised to the four-fifths. So we could just multiply our exponents. This would be the same thing as x to the eight. Oops. Let me rewrite that. x to the eight. Hold on. This is not working. Okay, here we go. x to the eight-fifteenths. Right? Just multiply our exponents. Two-thirds times four-fifths is x to the eight-fifteenths. All right. You're going to do seven and eight. And... Um, I can start you off on 7. Um, I want you to realize that this is the same thing as saying x to the 3 fifths power raised to the 1 half power. All right, pause and finish 7 and then do 8. Let's check your answer. So number 7, you should have this. This is the same thing as x to the 3 over 10. x to the 3 tenths power. Number eight, let's first simplify the inside here. This is the same thing as saying x to the fourth raised to the one-third power 
and then the whole thing is being raised to the eighth power. Right? Again, let's finish the inside. So the inside would be the same thing as x to the four-thirds power, and then we're raising that whole thing to the eighth power, so this would be x to the 32 over 3. Okay? And you can just leave it in that format. If you wanted to, you could, of course, change that into radical notation. You don't have to in this case. You could have either written this as the cube root of x raised to the 32nd, or if you like, you could write that as the cube root of x to the 32nd, like that. All right, so I want to go over again kind of the differences between these two problems. Okay, and so the tricky thing here is you really have to think about um, how you want to approach these. Right? So take a look at these two, and I want you to pause for just a second and think about what, what is the big thing you notice? What's the difference between these problems? All right, hopefully you thought about it, and if, if, you, if you look at these, the big difference is that in number 9, they're both square roots here. But in number 10, I've got a square root and a fourth root, right? So in 9, they have the same type of root. In number 10, they don't have the same type of root. Okay, so that's a big difference. So how would we approach this? Well, 9, we can approach this the same way that we've been um, working with, with radicals since the beginning, right? Radical 15, that can be factored as 5 times 3. So this is the same thing as, um, let's write it as radical 3 times radical 5 times radical 5. Right? And then we know what this is. What's the square root of 5 times the square root of 5? Well, that's just 5. And then I have radical 3. Right? So that's how we can simplify it if we have the same type of radical. These are both square roots. All right, number 10. These do not have the same type of radical. We have a square root, and then we have a fourth root. All right? So we can't do this the same way that we did number 9. Right? But the useful thing we can do is we can rewrite these using fractional exponents. So number 10, we have the square root of 5. That's the same thing as 5 to the 1 half power being multiplied by the fourth root of 5, which is the same thing as 5 to the 1 fourth power. Right? And here, we're going we're gonna to use um, one of our properties of exponents. Right? Remember, what's x squared times x to the third? Well, that's x to the fifth. Right? We can just add the exponents. So here, again, we can just add the exponents. We can do 1 half plus a fourth. Right? Well, 1 half is the same thing as 2 fourths. So 2 fourths plus 1 fourth, that's just 3 fourths. Right? So I'm getting a common denominator here and adding them up. So my final answer is going to be 5 raised to the 3 fourths power. Right? If you want, you can, of course, change that back to having a radical, right? and you could rewrite this as the fourth root of 5 cubed. Or you could write it as the fourth root of 5 cubed. Either way would be fine. Okay, here, I want you to do these two on your own. And again, I want you to think about how you're going to do these. Think about, um, think about whether the radicals are, th if we have the same type of radicals, and what difference that makes. Okay, pause and do these, please. All right, so on 11, this one, because I have different types of radicals, because of that, I would rewrite this as 10 to the 1 3rd power times 10 to the 1 4th power. All right? And I would add my um, exponents. So let's do that off to the side here. What's 1 3rd plus 1 4th? Right? I would need a common denominator of 12. And to do that, let's see, I would multiply this by 4 over 4. And the second one, I'd multiply by 3 over 3. So this would be 4 twelfths plus 3 twelfths. That's 7 twelfths. So this is 10 raised to the 7 twelfths power. Okay, number 12. Let's do that over here. All right, this one, I have the cube root of 20 times the cube root of 10. And because they're both cube roots, right, I, I don't, I can uh, just simplify it by factoring, right? So 20 I know is 5 times 4, and this is, 4 is 2 times 2, and here I have 10, that's uh, 10, oops, I'm sorry, erase, this is just a 5 times 2. So what do we have? 
we have the cube root of 5 times the cube root of 2 times the cube root of 2, and I'm going to put the cube root of 2 next, and then another cube root of 5. So what do we have? We've got um, these three factors here, cube root of 2 times cube root of 2 times cube root of 2, that's just 2. And then what do I have left? I've got the cube root of 5 times cube root of 5, that's the cube root of 25. Right? So that one we can do just like that. All right, one more here. I want you to, to try this one on your own. Right? This one's a little bit trickier. Okay, so pause and see if you can do this one. All right, let's see how you did. On this one, um, I notice that I have a square root and I have a fourth root. Right? They do not have the same type of root. So in that case, I want to rewrite these using fractional exponents. So the first one's easy. This is 3 to the 1 half. All right, second one, let's rewrite this one. This is, um, let me do this off to the side. This is going to be 3 to the 1 fourth power, that whole thing cubed. That would be the same thing as 3 to the 3 fourths power. Okay, so I have 3 to the 1 half times 3 to the 3 fourths. All right, and we can add the exponents. We can do 1 half plus 3 fourths. Common denominator is going to be 4. So the first fraction, I need to multiply the top and bottom by 2. So 2 fourths plus 3 fourths is 5 fourths. So our answer would be 3 to the 5 fourths. All right, almost done. Okay, so we're going to look at the division ones now. All right, and again, it can be confusing because you really have to think about um, what type of problem you're working with. Okay, what, let's think. What's the difference here? Well, 14, I have the same type of radical. They're both square roots. 15, they're not the same type of radicals. Okay, so 14, how would I do this? Well, the square root of 21, I could simplify that. I could just um, factor that. That's the same thing as radical 7 times radical 3. And on the bottom, I've got a radical 7. All right, well, so this one works out really nice, because radical 7 divided by radical 7, that's just 1. So this is equal to radical 3. Easy enough. All right, what would I do on number 15? 15, again, I don't have the same type of root. This is a square root, this is a cube root. So let's change to having fractional exponents. This is going to be 7 to the 1 half power divided by 7 to the 1 third power. All right, and here we're going to use our property. Let's think about this. What's x to the 6 divided by x squared? All right, we know that's x to the 4th. Right? The, the property is that we can subtract these exponents. Right? So we can do the same thing here. Let me do this off to the side. We can do 1 half minus 1 third. Right? Let's see, 1 half, let's get a common denominator of 6. This one, the second fraction here, let's multiply it by 2 over 2, so that's 2 sixths. This one, let's multiply by 3 over 3, so that's 3 sixths. 3 sixths minus 2 sixths is 1 sixth. So our answer would be 7 to the one-sixth power. All right? And hopefully you recognize that. That's a simple thing. We could have, if we wanted to, we can write that as a radical. Right? That's the same thing as the sixth root of seven. So two ways to write that answer. All right, last two. These you're, gonna, you're doing on your own. Please pause and practice these on your own, and then check. All right, let's um, see if you got it right. So the first one, on top, let's think about how to write that on top. That's the same thing as, oh, actually, let me, first, let me just mention, right? If we think about these two, right, which one would be easier to simplify? It's going to be 17, because they both have cube roots, right? And in fact, let's do that one first, right? I could factor this, right? I know that 16, cube root of 16 here, that's the same thing as 2 times 4, I'm sorry, 2 times 8, 8 is 2 times 4, and 4 is 2 times 2. So if I wanted to, I could just write that as um, the cube root of 2 times the cube root of 2 times the cube root of 2 times the cube root of 2 divided by the cube root of 2. Right? And then these divide out. What am I left with? I'm left with the cube root of 2 times the cube root of 2 times the cube root of 2. Right? And hopefully you recognize that is just 2. That one was easy. All right, last one. 
this one. Let's first rewrite um, this using fractional exponents. And I'm going to, again, why do I do that? Because I don't have the same type of radical. Top, I've got fourth root. Bottom, I have a square root. All right. So the top, what is that? That's um, 5 raised to the 1 fourth power, that whole thing cubed. Right? That's the same thing as 5 to the 3 fourths. Okay, so I did that off to the side. Let's rewrite this as 5 to the 3 fourths divided by the square root of 5. That's the same thing as 5 to the 1 half. And then right here I need to subtract exponents. So 3 fourths minus 1 half. That's the same thing as 3 fourths minus 2 fourths, which is 1 fourth. So the final answer is 5 to the 1 fourth. And if you want, you could rewrite that as the fourth root of 5.